Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our devotions begin with the beginning of the Christian life here at the baptismal font. The baptismal font is a symbol that is in most Christian churches and they vary in both size and uh, position. Here at St. Paul's, right now it's located actually in the rear of the sanctuary. And this is symbolic in one way because just as the baptismal waters are the entry into Christ's church, it is where Christ meets you, brings you, and grafts you into his body, so the baptismal font reminds us that this is the entrance into the sanctuary, the place where God's glory dwells, the place where God's people come together, the place where God comes to meet us. This particular one is eight-sided. And there are a couple different meanings behind that. First, that the eight, can, eight is a sign in the Old Testament for eternity, eternity. God created the heavens and the earth and then rested on the seventh day. And the eighth day would be representative of eternity past that day of rest in the last day of creation. It is also representative of the eight souls that were saved in the ark. And in fact, 1 Peter 3.21 tells us, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. That baptism now saves, which corresponds to Noah and his family in the ark. There were eight souls that were saved there by the waters of the flood. There are uh, unnumbered souls saved through the waters of baptism, through the waters that graft and bring people into Christ's saving work, where his gifts come to meet us. Baptism is not just plain water but is water included in God's command and combined with God's word. Baptism works the forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. The word of God does these things, in and with the water, along with the faith that trusts this word of God. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism, but with the word of God, it is a baptism, that is, a life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. The position of it at the entrance to the sanctuary reminds us that that is how we become members of the family of God. But the second position that we have this often in is up near the communion rail. And it is a great reminder for us there that just as we are brought into the family through baptism, so during communion, that is our family meal together that we share not only with the saints here in our congregation, but also with the saints that have gone before us, the communion of saints, with all the angels and archangels and all the heavenly host, as we look forward to that day when we will celebrate the marriage feast in the, with the Lamb together in his kingdom with all his saints. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have called us to be your own through the waters of baptism. Strengthen us in our baptismal vocations, that we may grow in our faith towards you and our love toward one another. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.